Well, yes, we have the elephants and we're following this young one and I was saying that it may have been left behind by a herd and we've come behind Twin Dam's wall and looking south towards Baboon Pan there is a massive herd of them all over the place and it seems like they've had a wonderful time playing in the mud already because there's mud everywhere. And this little guy is now going to probably come just behind us and probably in all likelihood cross behind and go back to where the herd is. You can see just to my right hand side here where they were playing there is a whole big section of mud so all of that is where they've been splashing about and you can see how fresh that mud is that they were here not even a few minutes ago. So had we been here about 10 minutes ago I think we would have probably seen them but there seems to be quite a few of them still around. I saw in the distance a number of them moving there and it seems like another grouping is coming back towards us so you can see there's one that's busy feeding Eating. And typical of the last few days there's just elephants everywhere hello little guy are you coming to say hello so we've got our little friend is just behind us here so isn't that clever that it used the scent and was able to find the scent of the other elephants and follow them until it's now going to pick up exactly where they've gone see how it's using its trunk look it's busy sniffing around trying to see okay my friends were all here my family was here now it's time to find them and you might find you'll play a little bit in the mud because it's just too good an opportunity to miss on a hot afternoon like this. There we go, it's throwing a bit of mud now and look how clever it is when it uses its feet. Obviously not too stressed about what's going on because it definitely is now time for a good mud bath. And an elephant mud bathing has got to be one of the best things. They just take absolute glee in doing it. And you end up with mud everywhere. They throw it all over the place. They almost have this sort of cocky attitude. The head bounces all over the place. The feet go up in the air. It just becomes a complete show as they do roll around and make themselves as muddy as possible. Now, the reason why he's throwing the mud in that way is you see it's throwing it up onto his tummy is because it's much cooler there so it's going to throw it up on the stomach just to help cool things down and you'll find it'll throw it behind the ears because the ears are also an area where they obviously try and cool the body so behind the ear means this cooler dark mud just gets all those veins nice and sort of moist and, and, and kind of covered in this cool mud and when the wind blows over that wetness it actually is then a lot cooler for this elephant. Are you going to go right in? Yes here we go isn't this amazing? I wonder if this is not going to attract some of the others back. I s so, Oz David, you're saying, oh, hold on, we've got tummy down. There we go. Oh, it's just too much. Now it's time to have a little photo shoot. Look at this. Isn't this amazing? Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's so incredible. Are you enjoying that? Hmm? Isn't this incredible? Oh, we've now slid down. But that is that one happy elephant, that's for sure. You can see just the way it's rolling around, it's just <laughs> completely full of happiness right now. And I would imagine it is fun. When you're a young boy, you often do this with your siblings and friends, and playing in mud for some reason just seems to be the most fun. And if you're a young elephant, it seems to be no different. Now, Oz David, you were asking if you could, um, would you be able to raise an elephant as a pet? Well, Yes, you could potentially do it, but it is fraught with danger. An African elephant is something that you can never really 100% guarantee its sort of trust in you. Um, it's an animal that is very, very large, and so if things do go wrong, it's going to go wrong quite quickly. But in saying that, when I've spent time in Kenya at the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, they get a lot of orphaned elephants that unfortunately have become orphans due to poaching problems where there's, the mothers have been poached and they've lost their mothers and so they take them in and they raise them back to adulthood and back to freedom and that process you find that the elephants become very very trusting of people and they'll really kind of take to people and you'll see them moving around with people and, and actually listening to what people have to say and kind of realizing that the people are looking after them and so it almost becomes 
I don't want to say pet because that's the wrong word for it, but they become trusting of us and they allow us to look after them and to, to be in sort of close proximity. But once they start coming into that breeding age, so with the Wildlife Trust, once they start going into sort of 12, 14 years old as a female, they start to leave and go and join other herds. And once that happens, then they, dis they sort of disconnect with the people Oh, you can hear them talking around us. They disconnect with you and they, they then go and become wild and you wouldn't want to just walk up to an elephant like that even after that process. Right, so we're going to probably hang around because I can see just elephants are everywhere. They're arriving from all different angles at the moment. So while we do that, I believe James has got something a lot smaller but also a mammal. <laughs> 